So now we're going to apply our newfound fact that eigenvalues of A are equivalent to the poles of the system and look at my favorite system, the Valerie on a Spring system that if you don't remember the modeling for this, you can go back to an earlier video to see that. So here's the A matrix, and the beauty is that we just need the A matrix. We don't need B, C, or D to figure out the stability. So all we have to do now is take the eigenvalues of this matrix. And I'll remind you that this value, K, M, and B, are all positive values the way that we modeled it. So first, let's find the eigenvalues. Do that we need to take the determinant of is minus a, equate that to zero. So we're going to take the determinant of, so we're going to do s minus zero, over here s plus b over m. Now we're going to take the negatives of these two, so positive k over m here, and then a negative one here. Okay, so we take the determinant of that Multiply these together, s, s plus b over m, minus these multiplied together, so we get a plus k over m. That will equal zero. Let's expand this, so you get x squared plus b over m s plus k over m. So we have this expression. And now what we can do is we're not quite sure what to do with it, so we can find, solve the roots by using the quadratic formula. So if we do that, we'll get s equals negative b over m plus or minus square root of b squared over m squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, and c, which is k over m. All of that over 2 times 1. So this might help us a little bit, it might not. Let's just simplify it real quick. m plus or minus, this is all over 2. Again we have b over m, we'll do quantity squared, minus 4k over m. So in, if we're lucky, we might be given values. So say we're given the values of m equals 1, b equals 4, and k equals 7 over 4. So we take these and plug it into there, what do we get? Well, we get 4 divided by 1, so we get negative 4, plus or minus, so b over m again is 4, so this time it's squared, so it's 16, minus 4 times k divided by m. So we get times 7 over 4. And this is all divided by 2. We just simplify all that. We get negative 4 plus or minus. This will be 7, so 16 minus 7 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So we will get this value. Okay, so we'll end up with 4 plus 3, so negative 1 over 2, and we subtract the 2, we have negative 7 over 2. So these would be our two eigenvalues. And we look at if they are positive or negative, are they in the left half plane? They are both real and negative, so we know that with these values, the system is stable. However, if we look back at this, we can actually determine something about the stability without assigning values, but we just have to think about what our system means. So if we look back at this relation, so in the numerator, we see that this is a negative value, so it's gonna start in negative, and then we're gonna either plus or minus it could be an imaginary number. So if this quantity is negative, you'll have an imaginary value. And so you would have in our plane, you would have some negative value, plus or minus some imaginary component. But you would 
be in the left half plane so that you would be stable. The only way that it would be not stable is if this value ends up being greater than b over m. So you could have, if these are real values, you'd get this negative value plus or minus some value. And if you, that value ends up being larger than b over m, then you, that's the only time when you would go into the positive region and become unstable. But if we look at our system, the only way for that to happen, for this numerator, for this value to be, the, sorry, the numerator to be zero, would be for this thing to be completely zero. So if this is value right here is zero, then one of the poles would be zero. But because these are positive, 4k and m are always going to be positive, it's always going to subtract from this value. These values are also positive. So we will actually never have a value, a pole, in the right half plane or on the imaginary axis. So this will actually always be stable. And you have to kind of just think about what each system means and if it can become positive where it would switch over to the right half plane. But in this system, it will actually always be negative and always be stable. So in short, what we've done is we've used this basic idea, we've applied it to a problem where we already had the A matrix, and we we're able to analyze the stability of the system and actually generalize it for all values of our parameters. All right, thanks.